How's it going guys and welcome to today's video. This is a video I've been meaning to do for quite a while now and it is how you would carry out a service and do maintenance on your vehicle at home. I currently find myself in a position where I'm transitioning and I'm building my own home workspace and I thought now would be a perfect time to showcase how I go about doing these jobs at home. I'm very happy to say on this video that I've partnered up with Mix Garage. Mix Garage is a website that sells tools, parts and accessories. It's a company that I've used multiple times myself and I'm very happy that we were able to team up to bring you this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the items that I picked up from Mix Garage is the items you see in front of you, which is oil filter and air filter for the servicing. I got Castrol Magnatech engine oil. I got a ways to dispose of the oil, which is my eight liter portable oil drainer from Draper. I've got a ways to fill up the engine oil, which is my funnels over here. I've got a 71 piece go through socket set from Draper there. And not part of the service on this side is the Nipex pliers and a four piece um, circlip pliers from Nipex as well. I'll be doing a far more in-depth video on the full range of Nipex pliers that I have at a later date. And that is it guys, let's get into this service. Before I crack into the service, I'll just show you the items that I'll be using for safety. First of all, behind the vehicle I have the wheel set up with uh, safety chocks uh, that's stuck at the back already and the handbrake is on. I've got my axle stands both two-ton there, I've got my jack also two-ton and I've got my uh, creeper that'll be make it easier for me to slide in and out while I am draining and um, taking down the oil filter. So I'm going to start to get this all set up so we can crack into the service. So the vehicle is up in the air now. Last thing I like to do is pick a spot for the jack to go in and that will be my uh, third safety item on it even though I've got two axle stands. Uh, you can never be too safe when you're under a vehicle like this. I'll be keeping it out of my way while also giving extra safety. Okay, that's good. That is going to keep the front end nice and solid. I'll be using my creeper seat to slide in and out. I have my oil filter up here that I'll be removing and we need to drain the uh, engine oil there. I'm going to be showing you my setup for how I remove this. Sometimes these can be removed by hand. Oh, there you go. That one's loose enough. Uh, but most of the time people over tighten them and you have to use something like a strap or a claw to remove your oil filter. Open up this socket set because this is what I will be using. Um, why I picked this particular set is I needed something different than what I already have. I have multiple socket sets and different tools that I have at work, but I'm putting together a home kit and this kind of covers a couple of different options or problems that I might come into. The fact that it has a go through option in it means it can um, do a job that a deep socket would also do and it was something I had not had in my kit so I said I would go with this one. It's a pretty extensive kit and I know plenty of mechanics that have used Draper Expert um, as their daily tools and they have got great use out of them as well. So it is a kit I'm very comfortable in using in a daily environment. And it's got a wide ranging amount of um, items in it. We've got our bit driver here, we've got our bits there. So we've got a quarter inch, we've got a three eighth, and we have our half inch there and let's all go through 
in the sockets and in the half inch. So I believe the sump plug is 13. So that will be my setup. And there's six point, which is what I wanted as well. I'm not the biggest fan of 12 points, but you have both options in this. You have the 12 point in 3.8, and you have the six point in these, which makes it a multifunction kit, which is what I needed. It also comes with these adapters to be able to change it up from a quarter to a 3.8. And um, let's get loose in that sun plug. Reason why I like a creeper so much is because you can just easily slide in and check all around your engine. Top side, over here. Check your rotors, check your CV boots, and you're able to give a very fast inspection all around on the underside, underside of your vehicle. Um, and you're not dragging yourself all over the floor. Obviously you need to have a decent floor to be able to use a creeper But I would advise getting one if you do So everything looks pretty good on the underside of this one. I had checked it before I bought it But with each service I go over I check the brake lines CV boots as I said inner one here so inner drive boot um, I will be taking the wheels off but you can have a look if you're not on the inside, you can even sometimes, depending on your brake setup, be able to see how much pad is left on the inner one. You can check the wishbone condition, uh, a pry bar in here, and have a look to see if there's much movement in the bush. You can check your drop links, your anti-roll bar bushes, which are just in here so you can give a very detailed inspection even though you don't have a lot of clearance this is the sun plug that I will be getting at somebody, somebody has previously left a lot of nice marks in it probably vice grips or a bad socket but let's get draining that. Um, when you're draining the oil, you want to have it to a reasonable temperature so it flows pretty well. You don't want it stone cold. So depending on your climate and depending on what the temperature is at the time, you may want to heat the vehicle up before you service a bit. This is the oil drain I'll be using. I picked this one because it is eight liters, which uh, is suitable to do in the majority of vehicles that I will be working on. I've got a sealable cap, which means I'll be able to easily dispose of the oil uh, and cart it in my car when I'm finished. Um, make sure that the lid is nice and tight on this side, which it is. And I'll take this out and leave it out. And put that in, in a minute so that's that I will be putting some rags down on the floor and this It should be good there. I'm going to leave that for a little while until it completely drains off. So enough oil has drained out now. I'm going to go and put the sump plug back in, tighten it up, clean off any oil around it and remove the oil filter. If you have a copper type washer on your sump plug, you may want to replace that or a cr crush washer. You definitely want to replace that. This is a little uh, rubber seal. I've checked it out and it's okay to reuse. After you do the service and you have it all topped up and all the levels are good after starting the engine, run it for a while and make sure that you have no leaks from your oil filter or your sun plug washer. Just a few minutes of uh, the vehicle running will tell you if it's all good or not. 
Okay, so that's all tightened up now. And I'm ready to move on to the oil filter. Just gonna let that drain off for another little while and then clean off up on the top and get ready to fit the new oil filter. Always compare your new oil filter with the old one and make sure the seal is the correct sizing and that the filter is the correct sizing as well. Especially if it isn't like for like, if you have the same part number, it won't matter, but if you're changing brands, it's always a good idea to do that. Got my new oil filter here. I've compared it with the old one that's there and it looks good. Looks like it's correct. When it comes to the seal itself, um, you want to, if it hasn't come pre-oiled, some of them do. This one has some oil in it already. You'll want to put some new oil, just a little film of it across the top. Make sure that you do that and then get ready to fit it back up. I've cleaned off the top side here. Make sure that there's no debris or anything that's in it. Cleaned up on the threads and this is ready to go back up in position now. And you just wanna put it hand tight and that is all good. So we have that and that done. Uh, I will be putting some oil in it now because I always like to be safe before I do it, but I won't be checking the final levels and all that until the vehicle is back perfectly down level on the floor. I'll be getting a plastic bag, putting the oil filter into, and I'll be putting the cap back on the drainer and cleaning this back up so I'll be able to remove that all out of the way. Sun plug tight, oil filter tight, and all that side is good. I'm gonna leave the uh, jack under it for a moment. I'm gonna check the brakes uh, nice and quickly, and then I'll be able to let this vehicle down and start to fill up the oil and change the air filter as well. If you don't have one of these, which not a lot of guys at home would, you would be uh, allowing the weight to be on the uh, wheel and then you would be using a breaker bar to undo those and then you could put it up in the air. I've got the stands out of the way and the jack taken out is now nice and level back on the floor again. I'm going to take off this cover at the top and start to uh, put in the oil. I'm going to put in about three and a half litres first, check the dipstick and go from there. I'm then going to be doing the air filter and just finishing off this service. just on the minimum level so I can put more in, get it to the max line, start and redip. I'm just going to start the vehicle, run it for about 10 to 15 seconds, allow all the oil to circulate around, turn it off and recheck the level.
So the level is now perfect and that part of the service is all complete. I'm going to put the top in uh, back together with the cap on and then I'm going to get at that air filter. So for the uh, air filter we're looking at Torx heads 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So we need to remove them 6. This will come up out of the way enough then to be able to access the filter and remove it and replace it. If you wanted to get this completely out of the way you would have to remove this clip here, flat screwdriver in there, that pops up, you can pull that back. Got my T25 adapter on the end of my bit driver. Clip here. And quite a dirty air filter, so definitely needed replacing, which is good. When you have the box out, always good to clean out and make sure you get all those bugs out of the way. So the air filter box completely cleaned out now. I removed it and uh, turned it upside down, put it in the bin. That's not something that you would need to do if you had an airline, a vacuum, a hoover, anything that can get the dirt particles out of it. You won't need to go to them lengths. Uh, it was just a lot easier for me to do that now besides trying to get something else to take them out. That job is done. I'm going to put all this back together and then the service side of that is complete. Alright, it's all back together now, so this job is now complete. I know the spark plugs were done in this uh, not long ago, so I don't need to worry about them for a couple of services, which is good. And everything else on the vehicle is, uh, is spot on, so I'm happy enough with that. Uh, checked underneath that I had it running for a while, and there is no leaks of any kind from the sun plug or the oil filter, so... That is, uh, that is what we wanted to see. I'm just going to put a service sticker on the windscreen, just a reminder of the mileage, so I know that in another 10,000 Ks, it'll be due for service again. And that is it guys, the job is now complete and everything is back together. A big shout out to Mix Garage for hooking me up on this video. If you're looking for any tools, parts or accessories for your vehicle, be sure to check them out. I've included a link in the description with my own discount code to give you a little bit off on that as well. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it useful. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.